Hey guys, happy Wednesday. Um, I am going to be doing a read aloud today for you and model how we can work on our skill of summarizing. So our reading skill to work on today is summarizing. Um, our learning target for this that you can see below is I can summarize a fiction text by using a strategy. I want you to look at two key words here, okay? So obviously we're working on summarize, but we're working with a fiction text. So it is a made up story and we are going to be using a strategy. So we're not just gonna summarize to summarize. We need to use a strategy and have one in place. And the reason why is because all of your teachers have taught you multiple great strategies for summarizing already this year. Um, and we're gonna focus on one key one today. And before we do that, I want you to think, what is summarizing? And uh, that's a question that it's pretty easy to answer. So summarizing is a shortened version of a text. I think we all know it's shortened, obviously, um, but it is in your own words. You are not taking words and citing them from the text when you are summarizing. You are reading the whole story and you are thinking to yourself, what are the most important ideas? And how can I tell those important ideas in my own words? Um, and you are going to use this to create a summary. The skill or strategy that we're using today to summarize is one that we've all used. I know all of your teachers have taught you. It is somebody wanted, but so then. And what I did over here on the right hand side is I created or I wrote down some questions that you should be thinking about at each of these steps. So when you're trying to figure out who that somebody is, I want you to think, who's the main character? When you're trying to figure out wanted, you need to think, what did the character want? What did that main character want? But something happens. So we have to think, what is the problem that happens? And a lot of times this occurs in the middle of the story. What was the problem? S is for so, and then we try to think, how did that character try to solve the problem? Then, to finish off the summary, you think, what was the resolution of the problem? So not only how did they try to solve it, but what happened after they tried to solve it? What occurred? What was the resolution? Okay, so we're going to use this strategy as we listen to a read aloud called Miss Rumpheus. Um, Miss Rumpheus is... In this story, she starts out as a little girl and it goes through her life's journey. So she'll grow up to be an older woman as well, but she, her name is Alice. And most of the story takes place when she's older. So her people that know her call her Miss Rumpheus. Um, but Alice or Miss Rumpheus, she um, loves to talk and chat and listen to her grandfather tell stories. And because of this, there are three things that she sets out for herself throughout her life. There's three big things. So we need to pay attention today. Well, as we listen to the story, I will stop and pause at a few places for us to think about who's that somebody and what did that somebody want? That's what I want you to think about first. And then I'll pause it again when we figure out um, who the somebody is and what they wanted. After that, I'll pause it when we figure out what the problem is, that's that but, the part of the story where but something happens. And then after that, we're gonna figure out what did they do to solve the problem and what happened after they solved the problem or tried to, okay? So I'm gonna play this aloud for you to hear. The Lupine Lady lives in a small house overlooking the sea. In between the rocks around her house grow blue and purple and rose-colored flowers. The lupine lady is little and old, but she has not always been that way. I know. She is my great aunt. And she told me so. Across the sea. When he was 
was very busy. Alice helped him put in the skies. In the evening, Alice sat on her grandfather's knee and listened to his stories of faraway places. When he had finished, Alice would say, When I grow up, I too will go to faraway places. And when I grow old, I too will live beside the sea. That is all very well, little Alice, said her grandfather. But there is a third thing you must do. What is that? asked Alice. You must do something to make the world more beautiful, said her grandfather. All right, said Alice. But she did not know what that could be. In the meantime, Alice got up and washed her face and ate porridge for breakfast. She so we know here that our main character is Alice, and later in the story she'll be called Miss Rumpheus, so they're the same people. So our main character is Alice, Miss Rumpheus, um, and what she wants is what she just discussed with her grandfather, and that is to travel the world as she grows up to beautiful places. She also wants to, when she grows old, settle by the sea. And then the grandfather made her want to do one more thing, the third thing, which was to make the world a more beautiful place. She went to school and came home and did her homework. And pretty soon she was grown up. Then my great aunt Alice set out to do the three things she had told her grandfather she was going to do. She left home and went to live in another city, far from the sea and the salt air. There she worked in a library, dusting books and keeping them from getting mixed up, and helping people find the ones they wanted. Some of the books told her about faraway places. People called her Miss Rumpheus now. Sometimes she went to the conservatory in the middle of the park. When she stepped inside on a wintry day, the warm, moist air wrapped itself around her, and the sweet smell of jasmine filled her nose. is almost like a tropical isle, said Miss Rufus, but not quite. So, Miss Rumpheus went to a real tropical island, where people kept cockatoos and monkeys as pets. She walked on long beaches, picking up beautiful shells. One day, she met the Baba Raja, the king of a fishing village. You must be tired, he said. Come into my house and rest. So Miss Rumpheus went in and met the Baba Raja's wife. The Baba Raja himself fetched a green coconut and cut a slice off the top so that Miss Rumpheus could drink the coconut water inside. Before she left, the Baba Raja gave her a beautiful mother of pearl shell on which he had painted a bird of paradise, and the words, You will always remain in my heart. You will always remain in mine too, said Miss Rumpheus. My great aunt, Miss Alice Rumpheus, climbed tall mountains where the snow never melted. She went through jungles and across deserts. She saw lions playing and kangaroos jumping. And everywhere, she made friends she would never forget. Finally, she came to the land of the Lotus Eaters, and there, getting off a camel, she heard her back. What a foolish thing to do, said Miss Rumpheus. Well, I have certainly seen faraway places. Maybe it is time to find my place by the sea. And it was. And she did. From the porch of her new house, Miss Rumpheus watched the sun come up. She watched it cross the heavens and sparkle on the water, and she saw it set in glory in the evening, 
she started a little garden among the rocks that surrounded her house, and she planted a few flower seeds in the stony ground. Miss Rumpheus was almost perfectly happy. But there is still one more thing I have to do, she said. I have to do something to make the world more beautiful. But what? The world already is pretty nice, she thought, looking out over the ocean. The next spring, Miss Rumpheus was not very well. Her back was bothering her again, and she had to stay in bed most of the time. The flowers she had planted the summer before had come up and bloomed in spite of the stony ground. She could see them from her bedroom window, blue and purple and rose-colored. Lupines, said Miss Rumpheus with satisfaction. I have always loved lupines the best. I wish I could plant more seeds this summer so that I could have still more flowers next year. But she was not able to. After a hard winter, spring came. Miss Rumpheus was feeling much better. Now she could take walks again. One afternoon, she started to go up and over the hill, where she had not been in a long time. I don't believe my eyes, she cried when she got to the top. For there, on the other side of the hill, was a large patch of blue and purple and rose-colored lupines. It was the wind, she said as she knelt in delight. It was the wind that brought the seeds from my garden here, and the birds must have helped. Then, Miss Rumpheus had a wonderful idea. She hurried home and got out her seed catalogs. She sent off to the very best seed house for five bushels of lupine seed. All that summer, Miss Rumpheus, her pockets full of seeds, wandered over fields and headlands, sowing lupines. She scattered seeds along the highways and down the country lanes. She flung handfuls of them around the schoolhouse and back of the church. She tossed them into hollows and along stone walls. Her back didn't hurt her anymore at all. Now some people called her that crazy old lady. The next spring, there were lupines everywhere. Fields and hillsides were covered with blue and purple and rose-colored flowers. They bloomed along the highways and down the lanes. Bright patches lay around the schoolhouse and back of the church. Down in the hollows and along the stone walls were the beautiful flowers. Miss Rumpheus had done the third the most difficult thing of all. My great aunt Alice, Miss Rumpheus, is very old now. Her hair is very white. Every year there are more and more lupines. Now they call her the lupine lady. Sometimes my friends stand with me outside her gate curious to see the old, old lady who planted the fields of lupines. When she invites us in, they come slowly. They think she's the oldest woman in the world. Often. All right, I say. But I do not know yet what that can be. Okay. So I just had to speed up a tiny bit at the end because I'm running out of time. Um, but let's go back to our strategy to figure out how we can come up with our summary. So our main character is Alice or Miss Rumpheus. So Miss Rumpheus wanted to travel the world uh, to beautiful places. She wanted to grow old and live by the sea and she wanted to make the world more beautiful, right? The problem though is she goes home to finally settle by the sea and she figures out what she loves to look at all the time are those, out, are those lupine flowers. The problem is that she hurt her back when she was traveling and she's unable to go out and plant flowers to make the world more, a more beautiful place. However, she gets lucky enough that that springtime when she was sick and couldn't plant, the wind and the birds took care of it and planted it for her. So to solve that problem for the future, once she felt better, she bought packets of seeds and sprinkled them everywhere she went. So that is our summary. Have a great day.